Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day in the Word. And today is Sunday, and in fact, it's the fourth Sunday of Easter. Today, we're going to kind of change it up a little bit. I've been spending our time in the Acts of the Apostles, and today we're going to change it up. We're going to spend our time with John's Gospel. And I'm doing this for two reasons. Number one, we've already talked about this particular section of the book of Acts. It was covered in one of our daily Mass readings. But the second and most important reason, I can't get away from the Good Shepherd passage of John chapter 10, which is read this Sunday. This is such a beautiful, powerful piece of Scripture, particularly, I think, in terms of seeing our Lord's heart for pastoral ministry and what it means to be a shepherd and how important he sees this ministry and how the the flock is such a primary concern for him. And so we're going to be in uh, John's reading today. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, And the sheep hear his voice as he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them. And the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, they did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, there's just so much here. One of the things that we see Jesus doing is using something that's very common as a part of life in his time there in the New Testament. And that is, for Israel of the time, uh, every village had a common uh, sheep pen for all of the sheep in the village. And so when the shepherds were finished with their flocks during, uh, during the day and were coming back home at night, what they would do is they would bring all of their sheep into one common sheep pen for the village. And then they would go home, and then there was a gatekeeper, someone who was charged with watching the sheep that are in the sheep pen all night long until the next morning when the shepherds came to get them. And he talks about two kinds of people that are wanting to get to the sheep. The one person is the shepherd. The shepherd, of course, is the one who owns the sheep, it's his flock. And he's the one that's charged with protecting the flock and making sure that the flock uh, is taken care of and is safe. And then you have thieves and robbers. Now, if the gatekeeper is there at the gate of the sheep pen and he's caring for the flock and protecting them, there's no way he's going to let a thief or a robber in. In order for a thief and a robber to get into the sheep pen, they have to climb over the gate. Or, or, or over the fence. And so he sees that those people, either the thieves and robbers or the shepherds, are the two groups contending for the life of the sheep. And the beautiful thing is he, he first gives them, uh, again, a reminder of how sheep react to shepherds. One of the things, and I, I learned this um, probably more specifically during a time when I was a pastor in Manhattan, Kansas, and I had a a number of people in my parish that were connected to the School of Agronomy and uh, uh, Animal Husbandry at Kansas State University. And 
one of the things one of them was telling me one day, he said, one of the things, in fact, it's kind of interesting when you think about Jesus using the image of sheep. He says, sheep are not very smart. In fact, they're really dumb animals. And they're, they're without protection, without guidance, they can get picked off. And I thought, you know, in some ways, that's probably a good explanation for who we are as a church, because in terms of the spiritual things of life, and especially dealing with with good and evil and all of those things, we're pretty dumb at times in terms of how we act. But the one thing about a sheep is the sheep, by being close to the shepherd, learns his voice. And so all day long, the sheep hear the voice of the shepherd. In fact, the shepherd and the sheep become so close that the shepherd even gives special names for the sheep and calls them by name. And, uh, you know, I don't know if it was Fred or Harry or Lazy and Goofy. I'm not sure what he used as names. But anyway, they knew his voice. So later on in the day when they were brought back to the sheep pen, they were mixed in with all the other sheep. And so you really couldn't tell whose sheep belonged to who. But in the morning, one by one, the shepherds would come to the gatekeeper and the gatekeeper would open the sheep, uh, the sheep gate. And the shepherd, the, the sheep wouldn't do anything at that moment until the shepherd began to call out in his sing-song voice, that same voice that those sheep knew from being with the shepherd all day long. They knew his voice, and so they would begin to separate themselves from the other sheep and come toward the sound of the voice. And so... That voice of the shepherd, not the voice of a stranger, would be the one that they would follow, and they would follow after him. And what a beautiful image. Shepherds were never cowboys. They weren't there whipping and, and shouting and corralling and doing all the things that cowboys do. What the, sheep, uh, what the shepherd did was go in front of the sheep, continuing to call out in his sing-song voice that those sh uh, sheep knew, and they would follow after him and go out into the fields. Now, of course, Jesus said they wouldn't follow the voice of a stranger because they did not recognize that voice. And again, one of the things we see here, Jesus saying, I'm the gate of the sheep. In other words, I'm the one that keeps them safe. I'm the one that will open the door and allow the shepherds to come in and to take the sheep into the field. What a beautiful image of how Jesus sees us with all of his shepherd, shepherds throughout history, that every shepherd, every pastor, in given a, giving a, uh, being given a flock of sheep, is being entrusted that gift by the gatekeeper, by our Lord himself, who entrusts the flock to that shepherd. And as he said, I'm the gate, whoever enters through me will be saved, can go in and go out and find pasture. In other words, he, he can come in and be a part of the larger flock. He can go out with his shepherd. It's all a part of the work that I have as the gatekeeper. And then the interesting thing, I want to kind of go back, though, to what Jesus said when he, uh, when he talks about the fact that the sheep will not follow the stranger because, and they'll run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of the stranger. One of the things that I think we have to see in uh, the human heart and in history is there are times when the voice of the stranger becomes the familiar voice. That through uh, just uh, abandoning or even just ignoring our faith, uh, not taking time to read scripture, which is the voice of God, making it familiar to us, and just ignoring the things of God, the sacraments, and in hearing more and more from the, from the thieves and the robbers, from the strangers, those voices can become so familiar to us that if they begin to find a break in the fence, the sheep can go after them instead, following a familiar voice. That's why one of the things that is an encouragement to all of us who are following after Jesus is to spend time in prayer with him, spend time reading scripture, which is where we hear his voice, spend time in the mass where we hear his words spoken over the bread and the wine, transubstantiating them into becoming the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
listening to him through the, the Gospels, all, these are all times where we hear the familiar voice of our shepherd so that we will follow after him. The beautiful thing that we'll see later on in this particular passage, we won't see it today, but Jesus goes on to say later on, I am the good shepherd. And how powerful that is for us to see that Jesus himself is not only the gate of the sheep, but he's the good shepherd. He says, I know mine and mine know me. So those of us who are pastors are not only leaving that sheep pen ourselves by ourselves, but we are following the chief shepherd Jesus as under shepherds. And so wherever he goes is where we are to go, that we follow the familiar voice as the under shepherds, just as the flock does as well. And then at the end of the passage, Jesus again gives us a beautiful statement that has been used throughout the history of the church as a beautiful, beautiful perspective of why Jesus came, why we have the incarnation, the paschal mystery, why we have this beautiful gift. Jesus said this, he said, a thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. And we see that. You know, the voice of the thief and the robber is taking us to destruction and away from eternity and away from the life of holiness that our Lord offers. He says, I came that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Now, in this particular scripture, the word for life is the word zoe. There's two words for life in Greek. One is the word bios, where we get biological, and that has to do with the fact that our heart is pumping, the blood is going through our veins and our arteries, we're thinking, we're breathing, all of the things are going on in the normal physical life of a human body. That's bios. Zoe is the quality of life. It means the life that is worth living. It is a life that is lived according to the designs and purposes of the one who gives us life. It is life to the, to the max, to the fulfillment. And that's what Jesus is talking about here. He says, I came that they might have life. I don't want them just to have biological life. I don't want them to decorate time. I want them to have relationship with the one, the God of the universe, who created them and gave them meaning and the purpose of life. I came that they might have that kind of life and have it even more abundantly. Because of Jesus, we not only are entering into that life, but we also have the beautiful privilege of experiencing the abundance of that life as we continue to live for him. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. How good it is to be together again on this Sunday, this fourth Sunday of Easter, and to remember the fact that Jesus, in his resurrection, in his ascension, being seated at the right hand of the Father, continues his work as the good shepherd of our lives. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.